Good morning, folks, and the Lord be with you. Welcome to the Vicarage for another Light Bite. In the Church of England, we've just passed Candlemas, and that means that we're heading for Lent, time of self-examination and repentance. And uh, the Lord knows that we certainly need it. This is all about God's wisdom, kingdom wisdom, the values of the kingdom. And I have to admit that light bite may not be an apt description of the talk. Anyway, here's our reading. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it's not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But, as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they're folly to him, and he's not able to understand them because they're spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. For the word of the Lord Thanks be to God. There are many proverbs about wisdom, aren't there? How about this one? I like this one. You don't have to be listed in who's who to know what's what. True. Here's another. A wise man learns by the experience of others. An ordinary man learns by his own experience. A fool learns by nobody's experience. Here's another. Experience comes from what we have done. Wisdom comes from what we've done badly. I think that's probably quite true. Here's another. More serious. Wisdom is the power to see and the inclination to choose the best and highest goal together with the surest means of, achieve, uh, of attaining it. That's by Jim Packer, a very well-renowned Christian scholar. The Old Testament is a library of books of many genres. In the Old Testament, we have mythology and history and laws and population records, and polemic, biography and poetry and prophecy and apocalyptic. There's even eroticism. Have a look in the songs of Song of Songs, very racy. But another of, the, of those genres is wisdom literature. And that's mainly in the Psalms and the Proverbs and the Ecclesiastes. My favourite wisdom passage is from Proverbs 3. Going back 45 years or so, my closest friend Vic uh, bought me a Bible as he headed off to university. And he had written in it some encouragement for me. And then a little 
quotation from, from Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord, it said, with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord, and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. In the New Testament, we find that wisdom has taken on a whole new complexion. It's all wrapped up in the person of Jesus. Last week's gospel reading was the Beatitudes, where Jesus teaches a kingdom values. He teaches heaven's wisdom, starting with, blessed are the poor in spirit. That's actually those who know that they need God's healing. They, they know that they are not sufficient for their own uh, salvation. They need to be cleansed in their lives. They need God's forgiveness. And it carries on in the same way. This week, we've got the outworking of it. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And Jesus goes on to, from there to teach about prayer, piety, love for enemies, and being careful about money, wealth, treating others as we'd like to be treated. It's not, uh, and you must understand this, it's not that if we're good people, we'll earn our place in heaven. It's more that the there are kingdom values, kingdom actions, uh, kingdom wisdom. If we're part of the kingdom, that's how we'll behave and we'll know. That's the wisdom of God. But it doesn't stop there. The wisdom of God through the New Testament is that Christ came to die for us, to be a sacrifice for sin, to open the gates of heaven. To those who would listen because we can't save ourselves it's all about the cross the focal point of history is that terrible cross and in the letters of paul you see it suddenly that jesus christ didn't just teach the wisdom of god and didn't just model it for us in some amazing mysterious way he is the wisdom of god in his sacrifice for us in last week's official reading, we had this. Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. But Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews, and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. There is no chance of knowing God through this world's debating chambers and politics and morals. We preach Christ crucified. Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. And that's how it starts this week. That's how the reading starts. I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. You want wisdom? Look to the purposes of God in Christ. Forget clever argument, attractive ideas, new ideologies, new moralities. Because the gospel is not human wisdom. It's God's wisdom, heaven's wisdom. We came among you, it said, with nothing except Christ crucified and demonstrating the Holy Spirit and his power. And he goes on to explain, as Paul, that there's a huge gulf between this worldly thinking and the thinking of the kingdom. Let's see if we can illustrate it. If you were from Chaucer's time and someone picked you up and dropped you into the 21st century, would you understand what people are saying? No. No, you wouldn't. The reality has changed in the interim. The language, everything has changed in the interim. In the same way, natural mind, time for this world, 
does not understand the things of God because the reality is different. Um, he can't understand the ways of God, wisdom of God. You need spiritual tools to understand spiritual matters. But the spiritual man, the one who is mature, in verse 6, does understand. Because, as in verse 16, he has the mind of Christ, who is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Those who have no faith don't see Christianity as anything other than one religion among many, or as a collection of moral teachings. Those who have a church-going habit see little except the building and the liturgy, and both of those positions are worldly, not spiritual. But those who are mature will recognise and speak about Christ crucified. One more thing to say. In the passage that we read, there are six references to God the Holy Spirit. So you've got uh, that the apostles' preaching was a demonstration of the Spirit and of power. These things are re revealed through the Spirit of God. No one can, can comprehend the, the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. We haven't received the spirit of the world, but the spirit of God. Our words are not human wisdom, but are taught by the spirit. And a nat natural person doesn't accept the things of the spirit of God because they're folly to him. And all that means you have all three members of the Trinity being brought together. Father, Son and Holy Spirit working together for our salvation. Is there one thing to take away with you? Yes. Christian faith is fundamentally about Christ dying for you, to buy you back, to redeem you. That is the wisdom of God. And anything which doesn't give that its proper weight is worldly thinking and not Christian. Christ did it because we couldn't do it. True Christians have the mind of Christ, and they're taught by the Spirit who lives in them. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for the reminder that at bottom line, our thoughts are not your thoughts, but that we are saved by the blood of Christ and your Holy Spirit lives in us. Help us to know and celebrate the difference that the Lord Jesus has made to us, that our home and our citizenship are in heaven, and that you are transforming our minds so that we think more like you. Lord God, please continue to work in us by your Holy Spirit so that our Christianity is far more than religious habits and good works. We pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to transform us by the renewing of our minds to your glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep all our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among us, and remain with us and our loved ones today and always. Amen. Amen.